How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Weather SpongeBob 1000 and in this video we're going to take a look at the overall weather pattern throughout the United States that's going on and how that will eventually lead to a much colder and snowier pattern as we approach the month of January. So take a look at the United States right now. We do see that there are some snow showers right over um, South Dakota and portions of Nebraska. There is a low pressure system I was talking about over the past few videos that was of course expected to dump a heavy amount of snowfall right over the midwest and it did exactly that where we saw many um, inches of snowfall right over the central portion of the midwest and we do have some rain showers moving through the eastern half of the united states but moving forward with the forecast we're going to see a very interesting pattern take shape here because on the back side of this low pressure system we're going to see the jet stream will dip a lot further southward we're going to see temperatures much colder than average move southward into the midwest and northeast and i believe that will lead to a more likely shot of a major snowstorm developing somewhere in the midwest and northeast where we do see that um, eventually the temperatures will become much colder than average for much of the great lakes and northeast let's actually take a look at the temperature anomalies over the next few days to see what um what you should expect when it comes to your temperature in each area of the united states so for now for much of the eastern half of the united states including new jersey maryland virginia pennsylvania new york um as well as west virginia and a large portion of the new england is experiencing temperatures much warmer than average this includes the midwest as well where minnesota north dakota as well as portions of Wisconsin and Illinois are experiencing temperatures right around 10 to 15 degrees above average but that certainly won't last as this chop moves through because as we approach the Thursday time frame the temperatures will be warmer than average for um, Pennsylvania and New York where temperatures should hover closer to the 50s which is definitely well above average for many areas of the mid-Atlantic and taking a look at Chicago um, your temperature anomaly should be around 12 degrees above average so what you typically experience in the winter add 12 degrees on top of that and that's how um and that's what should be your um around the exact temperature you should see in the chicago area and moving a little bit further north where we do see the um, temperatures will be around 15 to 20 degrees above average but we do see the cold air on the back side is moving through the southeast moving forward with the forecast we continue to see the temperatures hover anywhere between 5 to 10 to 10 to 15 degrees above average for many areas throughout the midwest and the northeast um, um as well um which includes um massachusetts maine um new hampshire and vermont you guys are experiencing temperatures right around 10 degrees above average by the time we approach the sunday time frame but look at how much the temperature will drop by the time we approach the first week of november we do see temperatures will be colder than average for um over the southeast and taking a look at the northern midwest we do see that temperatures will hover right around five to ten degrees above um below average and i believe that will help contribute to the possibility of a major snowstorm pattern developing in um right around the midwest and the northeast now going back to the radar to see what you should expect when it comes to precipitation the gfs model right now isn't expecting anything um solidable once this um storm system moves through bringing some rain showers over the northeast we're gonna see it's gonna be relatively quiet when it comes to precipitation throughout the united states there will be a clipper system though moving through minnesota and wisconsin right around the monday um january 1st time frame as we approach 2024 um so in those areas you should maybe expect around an inch of snow if you're unlucky if you don't like the snow or lucky if you do like the snow um as this clipper system will be fairly weak there won't be a lot of instability for this clipper system to work with so um places like milwaukee and minneapolis um, the snowfall will be at a minimum thanks to how weak this storm system is but we um this clipper system could encounter a little bit more instability but it seems like again there isn't enough ridging that would steer this northward to not only enhance the instability but also bring the precipitation a little bit closer to the coast for um for this to have a good possibility of becoming a major northeast snowstorm again there's still time to iron out the forecast if we do see the storm system move a little bit further to the north um east then of course the chance 
of a major snowstorm will significantly rise. There is plenty of cold air behind this storm system. The um, pressure, um, the pressure of this storm is right around 992 millibars, which is certainly powerful enough to become a major snowstorm if it were to impact the northeast. However, it seems like it's moving a little bit too far off the coast. I'm going to need to see a little bit more ridging before I could confidently say I will see a major snowstorm in the northeast. So I'll keep you guys updated regarding this um, because it could certainly have that possibility of bringing snowfall right up along the northeast coast, including the Interstate 95 corridor cities like Boston, Hartford, um, New Haven, Connecticut, exciting, of course, into New York City, Long Island, um, New Jersey, Philadelphia, those areas could see snow from this if we were to see a track further westward. Now, moving beyond this point, um, the temperatures will remain colder than average. And like I said, while the GFS model isn't forecasting anything like solidable when it comes to a snowstorm in the eastern half of the United States, the fact that it's at least colder than average is definitely a start because for much of December for the eastern half of the United States, it's been much warmer than average, so really the cold air won't be the issue by the time we approach January. We just need to see the moisture move in, and that's where we could see that potential of a major snowstorm. And since we're in an El Nino pattern, um, um, there's more likely of a shot that January and February will be snowier than average because simply during El Nino years, the eastern half of the United States experiences the most snowfall and more snowfall than usual during those months during an El Nino pattern. So the winter is far from over, um, that's for certain. So definitely don't assume that the rest of the winter will stay like this just because December was much warmer than average. But moving forward with the forecast, like I said, temperatures will remain colder than average for the first week of January from the 1st to January 5th. We do see that um, the jet stream is very far down to the south. There's a strong northwesterly flow. We're going to need to see if this keeps up, but um, look at the next few Clipper systems moving through in the very long-term future. We have one moving through between January 6th and January 8th. Um, through the Great Lakes, where this could easily dub maybe three to six inches of snowfall in some areas. And then we have another Clipper system moving through um, just uh, um, slightly after that point. Um, let me actually go to the 0Z, um, um, 6Z run, because that is the um, latest run. But it's fairly similar for the most part. Um, we do see a strong jet stream dip, a small Clipper system moving through. This would move through right around January 1st on Monday. And then for... And then after that, we'd have another um, Clipper system moving through right around January 4th, um, which could bring some um, snowfall, especially right around the Great Lakes region. But definitely um, pay close attention to this. But, but look at the multitude of Clipper, Clipper systems moving through. This makes me believe that we're going to see a major snowstorm pattern anywhere between January 6th and January 12th with all these Clipper systems moving through. So definitely keep that in mind throughout the Great Lakes region and the Northeast. Now, the European model is showing a fairly similar forecast. Of course, we have this trough moving through. And then as we continue to move forward, temperatures will become colder than average by the time we approach a new year, January 1st. Um, this small Clipper system will bring some snow showers to the Midwest, but not really that much. Um, the Clipper system, like I said, will be very weak. So don't expect anything more than an inch of snowfall throughout the Great Lakes as this moves through on January 1st. But moving forward, temperatures will remain colder than average for um, New England, the Northeast. But the European model is expecting that right about Jan between January 3rd and January 5th, that's when we should see a slight bump where temperatures should fall back or rise back up to earth, um, I should say, um, closer to average um, right around the Ohio Valley and into the Northeast before another jet stream dip moves through right around January 4th. And then look at this, another, the same Cooper system the GFS model wants to take southward, takes it a little bit northward in the European model's case. And temperatures as this um, Cooper system moves through, again, will be colder than average. So I do believe by the time anywhere between January 6th and um, beyond that, that would be our most likely chance of a major snowstorm somewhere in the Great Lakes and the Northeast. And if we were to see the snowfall anomalies for 
um, the mid-Atlantic during El Nino years, we clearly see that between late January into much of February, we, that's where we see much more snowfall than usual. So I do believe that we're going to see um, a snowstorm pattern develop as we approach the middle portion of January, where the chance certainly rises based on historical data of El Nino's between the long-term average of 1876 to 2023, we clearly see a pretty strong indication that it's much more snowy than usual um, right around late January to um, throughout the middle portion of February. So definitely that's when you should expect the worst snowfall this winter. So and we see that during December's of El Nino years, it's simply um, less snowy than usual. So right now, this El Nino is certainly going as planned um, when it comes to snowfall anomalies for the mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. So I do believe that th this winter will make a comeback here for the Northeast when it comes to snowstorms. Another thing I want to show you is the fact that we are in a positive North Atlantic oscillation. And at typically brings warmer um, than average conditions right around the um, eastern half of the United States, which of course means that there's less snowfall during a uh, positive North Atlantic oscillation. But look at the forecast over the next several weeks. We are expected to dip down to a negative North Atlantic oscillation, which makes me believe that we, all, um, we will be in for a snowstorm pattern very soon um, throughout the month of January for much of the eastern half of the United States. So yeah, guys, in terms of when you should expect your, um, your potential for a snowstorm, it should happen, I'll, I'll say, um, after January 6th, that's when the possibility of a major snowstorm moving through the um, northern Great Lakes as well as the northeast will certainly rise once we see this jet stream dip um, take shape here, and that will lead to much colder than average conditions for the chance of snowfall to be um, much higher, of course, and um, like I just showed you, during El Nino years, we see the most snowfall right around the later portion of January and um, throughout, um, through all the way till um, fe middle of February. So that's when you definitely should be uh, more on high alert when it comes to the possibility of snowstorms for the eastern half of the United States. But yeah, guys, that's it for now. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like if you do enjoy this video. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy it as well. And I hope you guys all have a great day.